Have you ever been on a hike with some friends but ended up getting stuck in quicksand and had to wait until rescue came? Or have you found yourself trapped in a deserted area with no means of starting a fire? Or maybe lost someone to an accident, where they got stuck in a car that landed in the river? Life is full of ups and downs, but most times, the simplest solution is always staring at you, yet you have no idea what to do when faced with danger. Don't worry, today we'll be talking about a few unknown facts that might come in handy one of these days. Oh my God. From the dangers of mixing certain cleaning agents to our bodies actually detecting lightning, here are 20 unknown facts that might save your life one day. Number 20 why you shouldn't ever touch a dead whale. As we can see, whales are very large, so just imagine their carcasses when washed ashore. They certainly attract a lot of attention and inspection. Now imagine you've yet arrived at the beach with some friends for a vacation, and at the shore you guys spot a washed up whale. The first thing that pops to mind is to take out your phones to capture such a phenomenal sight. However, it is very unwise to proceed further to get close up shots, as whale carcasses are unpredictable. Basically, as the blood circulation and respiration stop in a dead whale, it leads to the decomposition of cells and tissues by the microbes already present in the body, which leads to the further proliferation of bacteria. This process produces pungent gases like methane, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen, increasing the pressure inside the carcass, which in turn leads to the cadaver swallowing up like a massive dead balloon. Now, under normal circumstances, these gases would make their way out through the orifices such as the mouth or anus. However, it is believed that the whale's own body weight seals all the orifices, leaving no way for the gases to escape. Finally, let's not forget about the whale's blubber, which also plays a role. The thick fat under the whale's skin makes matters even worse. Blubber isn't porous and makes it nearly impossible for the gases to escape. The gases bloat the carcass more and more, and eventually, once the threshold of pressure is passed, it explodes. This explosive rupture will blast chunks of flesh into the atmosphere at a speed of 70 kilometers per hour over 50 meters. And FYI, it can even be deadly, and this should be more than enough reason why you shouldn't ever touch a dead whale. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Don't use bleach with ammonia. Not everyone likes bugs, especially in this period of vital pandemics and superbugs. At least it's beneficial because the rate of disinfection has gone up a notch. However, it's important to know that combining some household cleaners can be deadly. Take bleach and ammonia, for example. Mixing products containing chlorine bleach with products containing ammonia releases chloramine gas, which is toxic to people and animals. Depending on how much of the gas is released and the length of time you're exposed to it, inhaling chloramine gas can make you sick, damage your airways, or even cause death. The CDC reported a 20% spike in the number of calls to U.S. poison control centers in early 2020 because of exposure to household cleaners. That spike is attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, death from mixing bleach and ammonia is very rare, but if you've been exposed to a mixture of bleach and ammonia, you need to act quickly, especially when you notice these symptoms. Burning, watery eyes, coughing, wheezing or difficulty breathing, nausea, pain in your throat, chest and lungs, fluid buildup in your lungs. However, when inhaled in high concentrations, coma and death are possibilities. Number 18. The smell of urine or fish in the same home. Urine is made up of water and a small concentration of waste products. Urine typically has a subtle odor of its own, but this can change or fluctuate for a number of reasons. In some cases, your urine may even take on a fishy smell. Although this is usually temporary and easy to cure, it can sometimes be a sign of an underlying condition that requires more advanced treatment. Some agents that may cause a worrisome odor in urine consist of diet and dehydration. Basically, urine contains some of the chemical compounds found in the food you've recently consumed. These compounds will carry some of the food sent into your urine. With that in mind, it's unsurprising that eating fish can cause your urine to have a fishy smell. Another underlying factor is a urinary tract infection, which can cause bacteria from the infection to contaminate the urine, resulting in a distinct fishy smell. Other factors include bacterial vaginosis, trimethylaminuria, prostatitis, kidney stones, liver problems, and cystitis. But if your urine has started to smell like fish and there isn't an obvious reason why, do not hesitate to make an appointment to see your doctor within the next couple of days. Number 17. How to escape from a car. Car accidents can be frightening, but being trapped inside a sinking car is terrifying. 
Fortunately, you and your passengers have a good chance of escaping from a sinking car if you stay calm and act quickly. First, start by unbuckling your seatbelt immediately after entering the water. Open or break a window, and get yourself and any other passengers out. Prepare for sinking accidents by keeping a glass breaking tool in your car and rehearsing your escape plan. For those who might find themselves underwater in their cars, open the window as fast as possible before you hit the water. Stay still with your seatbelt on until the water in the car goes up to your chin. Then take several slow, deep breaths and hold one. Never try to open the door until the water has stopped flooding into the car. Initially, the water outside will put pressure on the door of the up to 600 pounds of square inch, meaning you won't be able to open it from the inside. But the pressure inside and outside the car should equalize when you start holding your breath. However, if you can't open a door and you're trying to break a window instead, aim for a side window, never the windshield. Windshields are several layers thicker. Don't take off your seatbelt until you have opened a door or window. Grip the steering wheel before you unbuckle. You'll need something keeping you tethered so that you can pull yourself out of the car. Once you're out of the vehicle, just let your body take you to the service. Number 16. When you find yourself caught in a fire. It's great to talk about emergency plans, but it's even better if you practice them, like the fire drills you have at school. Having a fire drill at home also allows everyone to see how they would react in a real emergency. Try to engage in the drill with your family at least twice a year. If you can see smoke in the house, stay low to the ground as you make your way to the exit. In a fire, smoke and poisonous air hurt more people than actual flames, but you'll breathe less smoke if you stay close to the ground. Smoke naturally rises, so if there is smoke while you're using your escape route, stay low means you can crawl under most of it. If you can't get out fast because fire or smoke is blocking an escape route, you'll want to yell for help, and this should be done from an open window or call 911 if you have a phone with you. Never hide under the bed or in a closet, even if you're scared. Doing this will make it difficult for firefighters to find you. Stay where you can be seen because the sooner they find you, the sooner you can get out. But while you wait, be sure to grab a piece of cloth to cover your nose so you don't inhale excess smoke and remain in front of an open window. Number 15. Address someone directly to get help. When you send an email, it's important to have the right tone and attitude. Because of this, you need to open with a greeting that addresses the recipient appropriately. When you properly address someone in email, it helps to set the right tone for the rest of your message. In addition, it ensures the recipient reads the email rather than ignoring it. Using the right salutation and greeting can also influence the future correspondence and help you establish a relationship with the recipient on the right note. Number 14. Encountering a Bear while it is a thrill to see bears in the national park, it's important to remember that these bears are wild and can be dangerous. Their behavior is sometimes unpredictable, as attacks on humans have occurred, inflicting serious injuries and sometimes death. Each bear in each experience is unique. There is no single strategy that will work in all situations and guarantees safety. Most bear encounters end without injury. Following some basic guidelines may help you to lessen the threat of danger. When you arrive in a park, always remember to check with the nearest visitor center or backcountry office for the latest bear safety information. If a bear happens to surprise you, stay calm. Do not surprise the bear if it's unaware of your presence. Most bears are only interested in protecting food, cubs, or their space. However, being mentally prepared can help you have the most effective reaction. Every situation might be different, but if you happen to spot a bear man encounter, help protect others by reporting the incidents to a spark ranger immediately and keep your distance from bears. Number 13. A fire during cooking. In an effort to keep your community safe, Plano Fire Department Captain Peggy Harrell provided some tips on what residents should and shouldn't do to prevent bad information and fight or flight instincts from creating a serious problem. According to him, in three easy steps, you can handle flames that erupt in your microwave or oven. One, keep the door closed. Turn off the appliance or unplug it if you can. Also, let the fire burn out in the enclosed space, and do not peek. The fire will eventually go out after eating up the oxygen in the space. Oh my gosh. So opening the door will only feed it more oxygen. If a fire occurs while cooking, fighting it may not be the best action plan. If you can't handle it, then call 911. But you can also prevent fire during cooking by pulling out the lid to the pot or pan you want to use. And if a fire starts, grab the lid or cookie sheet that you have handy and cover up the flames until they smother out. Again, do not peek. Number 12. If your hair stands on end while you are at an elevation. Here is what you know now that you didn't know a few minutes ago. When you are on the beach with your friends or kids or partner in the rain and thunder rolls and their hair or yours stands on end, that's not the time to be taking photos or laughing. Why can't you take photos? 
Well, when your hair does that, you are most likely to be hit by lightning. So hurry up and find shelter fast. It must have happened to some of you. So if you're on this train, then tell us about it in the comment section. Number 11. If you sink in sands. If stumbling into quicksand is one of the worries on your list, then don't panic. If it makes you feel any better, you won't sink in, at least not all the way in. Real quicksand is certainly hard to get out of, but it doesn't suck people like it always seems to in the movies and cartoons. According to a study published in the current issue of the journal Nature, it's impossible for a person immersed in quicksand to be drawn completely under. The fact is, humans actually float in the stuff. However, researchers in the Netherlands and France studied quicksand. They found it to be a combination of fine sand, clay, and salt water. At rest, quicksand thickens with time, but it remains very sensitive to small variations in stress. At higher stresses, quicksand liquefies very quickly, and the higher the stress, the more fluid it becomes. This causes a trapped body to sink when it starts to move, which is why you should remain calm if you find yourself in that situation. Quicksand has a density of about 2 grams per milliliter, but human density is only about 1 gram per milliliter. At that level of density, sinking in quicksand is highly impossible. You will descend up to your waist, but that's about it. But if quicksand becomes less dense as you struggle, it gets difficult to escape. The reason, explained the study's authors, is that quicksand's apparent viscosity, which is the thickness or flow resistance, increases after its initial liquefaction. The increase is due to the formation of sand sediment, which has very high viscosity. It's the difficulty of moving this dense sand that causes the problem. So how do you get out? Don't ask your friends to tug on you because they might pull you into two pieces if they try hard to pull you out. The way to do it is to wriggle your legs around. This creates a space between the legs and the quicksand through which water can flow down to loosen the sand, but you'll have to do it slowly and progressively. Number 10. If you get vertically disoriented when diving. This is sort of like the same feeling you get when spinning too many times around. Often what it happens is due to different bits of pressure on your eardrums. For example, if one ear is equalized and the other isn't, it'll put your senses off, creating a sense of vertigo. As soon as the other ear pops, you should be fine, and the vertigo is long gone. Vertigo can also happen if you can't equalize your eardrum ruptures, resulting in vertigo due to cold water entering the middle ear. This is usually accompanied by a great deal of pain in the air just before the drum ruptures. You get big pain relief after the burst, followed by vertigo. Vertigo on a dive can give you the feeling that the world is turning upside down, and this can be very frightening underwater. If it continues, it is best to abort the dive and exit the water, but ascending can be pretty difficult when you are completely disoriented and don't know up from down. You can always watch the bubbles, but unless there is a really strong downwards current, they're always going up. Remember to ascend as slowly as possible, especially if you are not able to look at your dive computer or depth gauge. Another good way to know which way is up is to look at the water in your mask. Water will always go down, so the opposite way of the water drops in your mask. Number 9. Animal Bites and Rabies Rabies is a viral infection of certain warm-blooded animals and is caused by a virus in the Rhabdoviridae family. Once symptoms develop, it attacks the nervous system and is 100% fatal in animals if left untreated. In North America, rabies happens primarily in skunks, raccoons, foxes, coyotes, and bats. These wild animals infect domestic cats, dogs, and livestock in some areas. In the US, cats. Cat scratches, even from a kitten, can carry a cat scratch disease, a bacterial infection. Other animals can transmit rabies and tetanus. Bites that break the skin are even more likely to become infected, so get it looked at as soon as possible. The symptoms of rabies may look like other conditions or medical problems, so always see your healthcare provider for a diagnosis. Unfortunately, there is no known effective treatment for rabies once symptoms of the disease appear. However, effective vaccines provide immunity to rabies when administered soon after exposure. It may also be used for protection before an exposure happens for people such as veterinarians and animal handlers. Number 8. Brain-Eating Amoeba The amoeba, also known as Nagularia fowleri, is found in warm freshwater lakes, rivers, streams, and even splash pads, especially in July, August, and September. While you cannot see the amoeba because it is microscopic, Waco mom, Lacey Avant, who lost her daughter, Lily May Avant, to the infection, said you should always assume it's in the water. According to their statement, Lily May was swimming in the Brazos River in Lake Whitney during Labor Day weekend in 2019. Lacey and Lily May complained about a headache and fever five days after swimming. 
They did not know that a brain-eating amoeba had entered through their nose into her nervous system. She contracted primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM, caused by the brain-eating amoeba. Lacey thought Lily May had the flu since she had similar symptoms. The doctor also couldn't tell what the problem was. The next day, Lily May was unresponsive. Lacey took to her Cook's Children Medical Center, where they did a spinal tap, found the amoeba, and tried to treat her. But unfortunately, after five days, they had to let her go. According to CDC, the early symptoms of PAM include a headache, stiff neck, fever, nausea, and vomiting. Once these symptoms start to show, it does not take long before the infection progresses rapidly, affecting memory and balance while causing confusion and mental abnormalities. While detecting the infection soon enough is crucial, Lacey keeps spreading awareness of the brain-eating amoeba to prevent children like Lily Mae from contracting the amoeba. Number 7. How to break a car window in an emergency. We hope you never have to think about shattering your vehicle's windshield or side windows, but if you ever find yourself in an emergency where you need to escape your car, then you'll need to know how to break the glass. Pull your headrest out of your front or rear seats if you have no tools inside the car to break the glass. Take the metal pegs from the headrest and jam them down inside the area where the window goes, up and down inside the door panel. Once you have them down as far as you can go, you can pull the headrest toward you until the window snaps. It usually cracks in the middle. The glass should crack and fall away from the door. Windows are made of tempered glass. Manufacturers design them this way to make them resistant to blunt force. So you can bang on a window all day long and not shatter it. But if you take a sharp metal, stone, or porcelain object, you'll find that breaking the glass is much easier. Rather than shattering the entire window, a sharp object will concentrate on a tiny area in the window and create a small hole or crack. This method is usually useful if you are trying to rescue a baby or a pet from the car, but you don't want the glass to harm the victim. A claw hammer is an excellent example of something that is heavy and sharp, but I guess not everyone carries that around in their vehicles. But with that, breaking the glass will be relatively easy. There is a catch though, if you use heavy metal to break a glass, you should go around the edge of the glass as its weakest point. Manufacturers assume that the center of a windshield or auto glass is the most vulnerable point in a collision or impact. Therefore, they reinforce the glass in the middle. The surface is at weakest on the edges where the glass is most likely to chip, crack, or break. You can start there and slowly work your way to the center where the entire piece will eventually shatter. Number 6. A water bottle can start a fire. This is pretty much the same as making fire with a magnifying glass, but instead you'll be using a water bottle. The water bottle acts as a lens that focuses sunlight into a super bright point which quickly heats up paper or other tinder to point of combustion. The first thing to know about making a fire with a water bottle is that it's not easy. It takes time and practice to get the bottle's position just right, and if the sun isn't at its full strength because it's late in the day or behind clouds, your efforts might go unrewarded. To maximize your chances of success, use clear bottles with smooth, curved tops that are filled with clear liquid. Colors absorb light and textures hinder your ability to focus the light. For Tinder, paper with dark ink works best because the dark ink absorbs heat and ignites faster. So the question now is, how do you do it? First, start by tearing two pieces of paper in half, folding them and set aside. Fold a third piece of paper in half three times, and if your paper has dark ink, ensure that it's visible along the longest unfolded edge. The bottle so that it passes through the curved top, creating a focused beam on the paper. Next, you'd want to keep the bottle steady until the light burns a quarter-sized hole in the paper. Set the bottle down and add a piece of reserved folded paper over the burn hole. Then add more paper when the hole burns through until paper ignites. Number 5. If you find yourself in the face of a tornado. If you spot a tornado that is far away, seek shelter and help alert others to the tornado by immediately reporting it to the newsroom of a local radio or TV station. But if you're at home, go to your basement or an inside room without windows on the lowest floor and stay away from windows. But if there isn't time to get to a tornado shelter or to a lower level, try to get under a door frame or get up against something that will support or deflect falling debris. The safest place in the home is the interior part of the basement. But if you don't have a basement, go to an inside room on the lowest floor, without windows. This could be a center hallway, bathroom, or closet. Avoid taking shelter where heavy objects are on the floor directly above you. Heavy objects like refrigerators or pianos could fall through the floor if the tornado strikes your house. Get under something sturdy such as a heavy table or workbench for added protection. If possible, cover your body with a blanket, sleeping bag, or mattress and protect your head with anything available, even your hands. If you live in a mobile home, go to a nearby building. Never stay in a mobile home during a tornado. 
Mobile homes can turn over during strong winds. Even mobile homes with a tie-down system cannot withstand the force of tornado winds. If you're at work or school, follow your tornado drill. Follow your tornado drill and proceed to your tornado shelter location quickly and calmly. Stay away from windows and don't go to large open rooms such as cafeterias, gyms, or auditoriums. Number 4. If your car skids. Skids happen when car tires lose their grip on the road. It can be caused by driving errors like overbraking, which means braking too hard and locking up the wheels, skids can also occur when the road is slippery. Another cause can be oversteering, which means turning the wheels more sharply than the vehicle can turn. Overaccelerating supplies too much power to drive the wheels, causing them to spin. And lastly, driving too fast, most serious skids, result from driving too fast for road conditions. Drivers who adjust their driving to conditions do not overaccelerate and do not have to overbrake or oversteer from too much speed. One of the best ways to avoid trouble and not adjust skids on the road is to drive smoothly. Plan ahead, watch carefully, and slow down, especially if you are unfamiliar with the road. Most skids occur when conditions are slippery. But if eventually you find yourself in a skid, take your feet off the pedals. Stop braking and stop accelerating. Then, quickly turn the steering wheel into the direction you want to go. As your vehicle turns back in the correct direction, you will probably then need to steer in the opposite direction to stop the turning and remain on your desired path. Number 3. Sucking the venom out of a snake bite. Washing the snake bite site can wash off venom that the hospital staff may be able to use to identify the type of snake that bit you. You should also keep clothing from around the bite site because the additional movement can cause the venom to travel quickly into the bloodstream. However, there have been a lot of old methods of treating snake bites that are now known to cause more harm than good. One of these is applying a tourniquet to the limb. That is absolutely wrong. Never apply a tourniquet to the limb because this can be dangerous. Studies have shown that confining the venom to an extremity where the bite occurred actually causes more damage to that area without providing any benefit to the victim. Another common myth that I'm meant to be talking about is sucking out the venom. That is also wrong. I agree, we've all seen it in the movies, where the cowboy gets bit by a snake in the desert somewhere and his friend prepares to suck or sometimes cut the venom out. This myth was even perpetuated in old Boy Scout handbooks. But it doesn't work. Sucking the venom out will only cause the poison to spread to the mouth, and the extractor pumps found in snake kits won't do any better. A study found that one of the most common extractor pumps extracted bloody fluid but virtually not a single drop of the venom. Meanwhile, cutting it out would only cause more tissue damage than blood loss. Just don't delay and try to get the victim to a hospital as quickly as possible is the best thing you can do. You can also apply other first aid measures, but I'm no snake expert. Number 2. Crossing the road. Pedestrians have to share the road with vehicles, so it is important that they take care when crossing the road. As a pedestrian, always plan where you will walk and always choose the safest place to cross a road. Follow the safe road crossing procedure, which includes stop, look, listen, and think. Stop one step back from the curb or shoulder of the road if there is no footpath. Look in all directions for approaching traffic. Listen in all directions for approaching traffic. And finally, think about whether it is safe to cross the road, but it's safer to cross when the road is clear or all traffic has stopped. When crossing, walk straight across the road. Keep looking and listening for traffic while crossing. This information is especially for the youngsters learning to cross roads. But it also serves as a useful reminder to everyone, particularly to those who may be distracted when crossing the road. Whenever possible, cross at a pedestrian crossing, traffic signal, or pedestrian refuge. Make sure to always have a clear view of approaching traffic and where drivers can see you. And if it turns out that you cannot cross the whole road in one attempt, wait on the pedestrian refuge or median strip. Number 1. Don't be a victim of electrocution. The voltage of electricity and the available electrical current in regular businesses and homes has enough power to cause death by electrocution. Electric current cannot exist without an unbroken path to and from the conductor. Electricity will form a path or loop. When you plug in a device like a power tool, the electricity takes the easiest path from the plug-in to the tool and back to the power source. This action is also known as creating or completing an electrical circuit. People are injured when they become part of the electrical circuit. Humans are more conductive than the Earth, which means if there is no other easy path, electricity will try to flow through our bodies. If you suspect that some object might be electrified, and you insist on checking, then touch it with the back of your hand instead. There are four main types of injuries you might sustain if you're exposed to live currents, one of which is called electrocution, and it can be very fatal. Others include electric shock, burns, and falls. To prevent being a victim of any of these listed injuries, always unplug the iron before filling it with water. 
In the bathroom, never use electrical devices if your wet or humidity level is too high. Do not use electrical devices or extension cords near a pool. If one of the breakers on your distribution panel trips often, spread out your devices onto different circuits. That brings us to the end of this video about 20 unknown facts that might save your life one day. Be sure to let us know what you've learned about this topic in this comment section. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.